you join in the responses on our service sheets. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. So let us sit or kneel. So let us pray together. God of our days and years, we set apart this time for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything. Therefore let us, in penitence, open our hearts to the Lord, who has prepared good things for those who love him. You made us to be one family, yet we have divided humanity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You were born a Jew to reconcile the people Yet we have brought disharmony amongst races. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. We rejoice in our differences, yet we make them a cause of enmity. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of the Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as a fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, 
as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devoted Jews from every nation under heaven, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Is and Asia, Fif, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, and in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deed of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, they are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken from through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in these days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mists. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great day and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on his in the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Shall we stand for our Gospel reading? Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. (coughs) Jesus spoke to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare it to you, the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. And for this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Would you please be seated? Two Sundays ago at the Ignite Youth Group, we were thinking about the Feast of the Ascension. And as part of it, we discussed uh, this verse from Acts chapter 1. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. According to the writer Luke, the very last words that Jesus spoke to his disciples before ascending into heaven. And we discuss the first part of that verse. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Consider what was going to happen at Pentecost, which we celebrate today. The Holy Spirit coming on the disciples. We talked about what it meant for the disciples. Given God's power, God's inspiration... God's spirit that would never leave them. Sure, Jesus had gone back into heaven, but the spirit would always be there. We discussed that, the thought that through God's spirit, he is with each of us. That was true two weeks ago at Ignite. It's true here today. We reflected on the words that were spoken over a number of the people there by the bishop at their confirmations. Confirm, O Lord, your servant with your Holy Spirit. The bishop asking God to send his spirit on them. God is with us in our lives. At home, at school, out and about, wherever we go, we have the spirit with us. And then we thought about the second half of the verse. You'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. For the disciples, this started at Pentecost, the birth of a church, and it spread throughout the Roman world, the Mediterranean, the Middle East. For them, that was the ends of the earth. All of them playing their parts, each disciple taking on Jesus' work of spreading the good news. We thought about what that means for us. One of the group came up with an interesting phrase that said, Don't be a Jesus hogger. In other words, don't keep Jesus to yourself. Tell others. And we talked about how. How did the disciples do it? They were talking to people, most of whom didn't know who Jesus was. They'd never met him. So they spoke from experience. They told stories. Do you remember when Jesus fed the 5,000 Brilliant, wasn't it? The crowds had gathered on the hills. Jesus had been teaching them. It was 
getting late and I was quite hungry. Well, we all were. So we mentioned it to Jesus. He said, you feed them. Ridiculous. We didn't have anything to give to them. As a boy with five loaves and two fish, but that wasn't going to be enough. Well, Jesus got to sit down. He prayed a blessing on the food. He got us to hand it out. And it kept, well, the only word for it is multiplying. Everyone got fed. They all had enough to eat. And at the end, we collected 12 baskets of leftovers. Utterly amazing. Do you remember that time when he calmed the sea? We were sailing the boat across the lake. It was getting late. Jesus fallen asleep. The wind got up. The waves became rough. Jesus slept like a baby. We were being tossed around and he was in the land of Nod. I was worried. We all were. We thought we might capsize. We woke Jesus. We thought he could help. And he did. Not by bailing or rowing. He spoke to the wind. Be still. He talked to the waves. Calm down. And they did. Couldn't believe it. Who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. And we thought about how we might do it with friends. It's not easy to do. Talking about faith. We said maybe we need to have and get across some of that same excitement. The other week at night we made marble runs. We were giving cardboard, paper and scissors, nothing else, except a giant marble. And we were told to get creative. Ours was freestanding. Someone else did one that had gaps for the marbles to jump. We had jack potatoes and bolognese and ice creams. Next week we're going to the beach. Beach games and sand arts. Why don't you come along? Or if you can't make that one, come in June. It's our camp. We've got a theme of Ava this year. Excitement. Getting the message across. Something that Peter managed at Pentecost. Filled by the Spirit, speaking to the crowds. Actually, it wasn't just Peter. All the disciples were filled with the Spirit, all 12 of them. They were all talking in other languages. And you can perhaps imagine the excitement, such a spectacle that it drew a crowd. Hundreds of people gathered to find out what on earth was going on. And it was Peter who then explained it, who talked about Jesus. We're not drunk. It's only nine in the morning. It's what Joel says in his prophecy. And then he challenged the crowds to think about what it meant for them. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. <clears throat> and then had we read on, had Terry gone a bit further in the reading, then we would have heard Peter tell the good news of Jesus. And on to the end of a passage, around 3,000 were added to, that num to their number that day. Peter shared the good news. He got it across. He was excited. The challenge for us however young or old we are, making Jesus known. As it says in the hymn, we have a gospel to proclaim good news for all throughout the earth. Let's share the good news. Let's share the excitement with others. So we take our hymn books and we stand and sing our second hymn, hymn number 732, The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free, Walk, Walk in the Light, hymn number 732.
are statements of faith. Do you believe in trust in God the Father, source of all being and love, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe in trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. of your spirit for those who are tiring in the battle against injustice and oppression, for those exhausted by the struggle with poverty and hunger. Holy Spirit, help, help us. Loving God, we ask for hope and comfort of your spirit for those whose lives are overshadowed by illness or pain, for those whose lives are darkened by sorrow or bereavement. Holy Spirit, help, help us. Loving God, we ask for the peace and joy of your spirit, for those living in the shadow of war and violence, for those eaten up by guilt and anxiety, and those whose Christian life has become hard and dry. Holy Spirit, help us. us. Loving God, we ask for the guidance and strength of your spirit, for those uncertain how to use their time, talents and gifts for those tempted to do what is wrong. Holy Spirit, help us. Loving God, we ask for the love and courage of your spirit, for those reaching out to comfort the distress, for those reaching out to others with the good news of Christ. Holy Spirit, help us. Loving God, we ask for the assurance of your spirit to know your presence with us in our daily lives, in our relationships, in our work and service, in our worship in our times of joy and pain. Holy Spirit, help us. Loving God, we pray for the inspiration of your spirit. We thank you for the joy of sharing with others your good news. You gave us a living, vibrant gospel to proclaim, not to keep to ourselves. Inspire us to take out and share our faith with those we meet. Holy Spirit, help us. Shall we stand to share the peace? God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. To offer one another a sign of peace. So we continue now with our offertory hymn, hymn number 400. And
479, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Hymn number 479. <laughs> turned away, 
you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You, you embraced, embraced us as your children and welcomed us. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking a cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and or nil. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Wherever we are many, we are one body, because we all share. Take this bread 
and this world, in whom God comes to us so that we may come to God.
so let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing for the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. So the Spirit of Truth leads you into all truth. Give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the words and works of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. <coughs> Amen. So, our final hymn today. Hymn number 491, Love Divine, All Love, 6 7. Hymn number 491.
to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.